This ain't Texas, but it is Kansas City. Yeah, dog. Okay, so, you know, Beyonce has this album coming out. Mm -hmm. Country. And when it came out, what was interesting to me was the response from, from people, you know, especially saying that she couldn't claim country, you know? And what's interesting is that she posted the cover. Mm -hmm. And in the cover, it talked about how this is really um, her resisting the way that they treated her at the CMA Awards. Yes. When she sung with the Dixie Chicks. That yes. And mm -hmm. I remember that. It was so much chaos. It was chaos. Yeah, and then they pulled the video footage yes. because of how crazy it was. And then the Dixie Chicks haven't been the same. But what was interesting to me was like, I don't understand how you can take ownership over a specific genre, especially when that genre is more geographical. And so then I was like, well, I'm really country from Kansas City. Kansas you know? City, we have our own state. Right, yeah. exactly. And so for me, I was like, well, I want to go home and be able to tell a little bit about the history, especially when it comes to black cowboys in Kansas City, because I feel like nobody does that. And I was like, I know this plane, because I remember coming down here to the yes. American Royal or going to the stockyards and stuff like that, you know, and it's also a rich barbecue place, so that's a little bit rooted in that as well. I think the American Royal is a good place for us to start because, again, like you said, it's heritage. The American Royal is associated with barbecue, horse shows, of course, but they're a scholarship foundation. All of those events, the barbecue contests, the horse shows are all in concert to raise money to help send kids to school. Okay. So I think that's really cool with the amount of money that you have should not really pertain to where you can ride, what you can ride, or even how you consider yourself a horseman. And so for us to even be here in this space uh, for the American Royal Organization that was founded by a former slave, uh -huh. I think is is very telling. So Tom Bass was a former slave from Mexico, Missouri. He became known as a world-renowned horseman. He even invented a horse bit where you use with the bridle to guide your horse. We still use that same product today in the horse world, not just black horse people, horse people all across the country, all over the world still use the same bit. His legacy gets kind of lost in probably some of the socialism and the classism with, with horse riding and with being an equestrian, but his legacy is very strong. This building is still standing. There is a horse arena named for him out there. Now, how did you learn all this? I'm a bit of a history nerd. Okay. Um, and then in becoming a, a cowgirl or an equestrian, um, I kind of just wanted to know, like, where did it, like, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. We know the stories of black horse people. We know that black people ride horses, mm -hmm. but we don't get to see those stories. You know, we, we know of the Lone Ranger, but we don't know that the Lone Ranger is inspired by a black cowboy, you know, because we know John Wayne. That happens so often, you know, so. With a lot of stuff. With most stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. Okay, so we're going to the arena. So this is where they would normally have rodeos at. Um, yes. This is the rodeo. This will be a big rodeo arena, but because uh -huh. of the alpaca show today, they have alpaca in here. I am obsessed. I'm Oh my gosh! <laughs> and so these are much like horses. Uh -huh. These are, this is its lineage, essentially. Got it. It's, it's um, papers that shows who its mom uh -huh. and dad are and Got then it. where their mom and dad came from also. Got horses it. are very much the same way, just like dogs. The better paper, yeah, the better bloodline you have, the better horse you have, the higher ticket. Ah, okay. You know, everyone is like, oh, it costs a bajillion dollars to ride a horse or to uh -huh. be a horse owner. And there is some truth in that. Like, uh -huh. you can buy a horse for $400, $500, mm -hmm. but you're not necessarily going to always have the same success with that $500 horse. To buy a horse that is papered and, like, comes trained, you just going to plug and play and hop on it, mm -hmm. you probably going to start at about three bands. Okay. That's still yeah. lower than what I would expect. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean. I would buy a horse. Yeah. Most people don't have a place to store their horse. People often ask me, so where do you keep your horses? And my response is often, some of us got that 40 acres and a mule. Oh. Because like, <laughs> you know, like how dare, like where do you keep your horse? Right, the thought isn't that, that I don't have a place to keep my horse at. Mm -hmm. But also there aren't a lot of places. Like this is the one place in Kansas City probably that we could have a rodeo. And that is something that I'm 
extremely passionate about bringing Black Rodeo to Kansas City because it is the perfect way to exhibit and show our black cowboys, not just here in Kansas City, but regionally. Right. But this is the one place and it's expensive. Like it costs a whole lot of money to have an event here. And so we don't have them. <laughs> we don't get to have those rodeos. We don't get to have that experience, but more than anything, we don't get to have that introduction of culture to other people who aren't familiar, who right. don't get that opportunity, who don't see. So Do you travel to any other cities for rodeos? Yes. One of the places that our club goes to is Okmuggy, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, or yeah, Okmuggy, Oklahoma. They have been having a black rodeo there for like 86 years. It's the culture. Right. It is the environment. It is being outside at the arena under the lights and to be in that element outdoors. And it's just a lot different. It almost feels like, um, black rodeos and i hope no one's offended but black rodeos find, kind of find fall in line of like a chitlin circuit type situation because they're in smaller cities as kansas city is growing out of its small flyover town mm -hmm. and desiring to be a big city mm -hmm. we lose some of that cowboy image because we don't want to be referred to as a cow town the relevance of the history of how the city was made right here on the stockyards and how important that is we we lose that because we're so busy competing to be a big city so as a a black woman with a horse what challenges do you you face here because i know you talked a little bit about classism like what does those challenges look like when you enter into these other spaces it's super convoluted um because to just go get my horse grab my saddle and hop on it and ride in my neighborhood to ride in my community i feel like a rock star because everybody that i see is double taken like they can't believe that one, that I'm on a horse in a residential community, but I know that it is because that I'm a black woman on the horse. You know, like, I've ridden in a parade in the Jazz District, and there was a girl, and I, I cried because she was like, oh my God, mommy, her hair is like mine. And my afro was busting out the sides of my hat. And I'm like, eh. like, girl, come here. There's always a sense of probably, am I welcome here? Am I going to be safe? Um, like, what? What am I going to face when I come into this space that I'm not familiar with necessarily because necessarily because it's not my community? And then at, from, as a, from a standpoint of having an organization that is trying to, like our whole mission is we want to introduce kids and communities to horsemanship because I've seen what it does for kids. I've seen what it does for, for, for grownups to be able to ride a horse and to have that release or that connection or even to show, to learn respect and show empathy. Like everybody, should have that opportunity to get to experience that. And a horse is kind of just like a catalyst to help that happen. I feel like in that capacity, working as an organization, there are more issues because, you know, there's no facility with no place to call home. There's no place to find lessons. There's no place to give those lessons to. That is always a challenge for me. And then if our goal is to introduce kids, particularly in urban areas to horsemanship, like if we find a a lesson provider for them that has the arena, that has the things that we don't have, are they going to be able to relate to the kid in a way that we need them to relate mm -hmm. to? So they don't feel, leave feeling like, you know, what is this for? And then they miss that opportunity to find a passion, to fall in love with it. You know, they give scholarships to, to ride horses to kids, just like they give scholarships to kids to play ball. A girl in our organization got big bucks, full ride scholarship to go to the University of Wyoming to ride her horse. Oh, wow. And so if we can get kids to know like, hey, you can get school paid for just for loving your hobby and loving your passion and doing something that you enjoy, it starts to change the narrative of us feeling like, oh, all of our, our strength, our power, is in being able to have a ball. We're so much more than what people think of us. I remember growing up, and one, they would always bring horses to the schools, and we would get to ride horses then. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also remember, like, you know, I lived right on Parallel. Yeah. And I remember watching people ride their horses up and down Parallel, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. But it never really expanded out of, outside of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think it was until I moved to California mm -hmm. that then I was like able to ride horses on a more regular basis because that was a part of the culture there. Yeah. And so it's interesting that there seems to be almost like a disconnect here from horses in the everyday public considering it being Kansas, you know? Again, I don't I don't know if it is because of that that 
failure to embrace the roots, the Cowtown roots, what got you here that it feels like that. I don't know if it's that the community doesn't want to be exposed. It could just be me. I feel like I want to shout it from the rooftops that Kansas City has black horse culture. Why are we not ensuring that people know our stories, mm -hmm. that people know that we are here? And again, it could be because there's not facilities to accommodate, you know, a picture horse. You know, where are you going to hold all these horses? And how big is the, the black horse community here? Big. Okay. <laughs> big, big. Okay. <laughs> probably venture to say there are 200 members of the black horse community wow. would that be fair i feel like that's probably fair 200 200 people right two at least okay on sundays it is not uncommon to see 30 black people on right. horses at swole park it's a spectacle like it really is it's those are 30 guys on horses and they're doing what they're doing and then it's the guys over here with the bikes and then the, the hot cars over here like it it is really a a melting blending pot of all of the things that make black people unique in the way that they celebrate like their uniqueness, the, their passions, their hobbies, like right there in Swope Park. I love it. And it, it, it's crazy because it's like, guys, this is so cool. <laughs> I love that. Now we're going to see some horses. We're going to see some horses. All right. You're welcome. Ooh, Ooh. Sophie, you got spin ends, girl. You need some sacred, girl, because you is mad. This is like where a lesson would actually take place. Most of the facilities like this are at somebody's house. Got it. Like somebody has just made, you know, came up on some acres and made a turnkey, uh -huh. and now they're using their property to pay for their home. Got it. Like this is 48 acres here. Well, all those trailers are somebody else's trailer. So got it. Gives you, and people board their horse here. Look at your eyes. They so big. You got 20-20 vision. There we go. I don't, but I ain't wear my glasses today. Their peripheral goes all the way back to their butt. What? Essentially. Wow. But that's why people are like, don't stand directly behind a horse, because that is like the small area that they can't see. Got it. work horses, uh -huh. they do um, generally quarter horses. That is just a cluck up, cluck up, cluck up, uh -huh. cluck up. But um, I'm learning, especially in our black horse community, we uh -huh. do, we like flashy horses. Got we want to be seen. Got it. And so most people in the black horse community ride a gated horse. It creates a four step beat. It's the Got it, okay. Chad, easy way to put it. Quarter horse hurts your nuts. And <laughs> you just sit here and move with your hands. Got it. Cowlack, smooth ride. Okay. Lobby. Most everything Great. that you do to a horse, you want to start on your left hand side. That's okay. how I was taught. Okay. So you, when you start your grooming, everything uh -huh. starts on this left okay. hand side. Also, when you go to get on, uh -huh. you're going to get on from your left. Got it. Okay. So that makes sense. To the left, and uh -huh. you're going to put that left foot in, in there, there and then throw the leg over. Bring the leg over on the side. Okay. I feel right. like we getting a Woo! Now that's a little high, girl. I I'm gonna need the steps too. <laughs> I the leg did not go up. <laughs> yeah, go that's probably what it could. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, why is your head? Okay. <laughs> On my head. Easy. Okay. Whoa. Grab the hair. Grab the hair. Grab the hair. Leg in. Mm -hmm. yep. And then. Oh. All right. Okay. Toes in the stirrup. We on. Come on. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so if ever he starts getting away from uh -huh. me and my side, just pull his reins back and tell him whoa. Okay. He's doing okay. Yeah, we chilling. <laughs> <laughs> and him is a good boy, so him not, him good boy. I love this little wet and wavy. <laughs> So how long you been riding horses? I have been riding horses, pro I'm sorry, um, probably, I guess, close to 20 years now. Uh-huh. Um, we started when my daughter, Taylor, wanted, we, my parents bought a house and they got some land. Wait, I know Taylor, Donna. You know Taylor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Where are you going? We got some land and 
started to, my daughter wanted to take horse riding lessons. Uh -huh. And those horse riding lessons turned into a whole saddle club. Oh, wow. Yeah, pretty cool. All of the kids ended up riding. All the kids ended up having their own horses. Like, uh huh. Whose horse is in number three? No, uh, oh, he liked number three. Yeah, and number three put in them ears though. What that mean? Pin ears is a sign of aggression. Oh. So every time he pins his ears, that's like don't f with me. Uh uh. <laughs> I'm gonna stay away from number three. <laughs> look at us. Look at us. We make it. Look, look at us. At us. So, Romeo, we friends. Now, I'm really obsessed with the alpacas because what's the purpose of them? Like, what do you do with an alpaca? Fur, like, here. You shave them, right? Shave them, we make stuff. Yeah. Perfect. I know it's not cashmere because cashmere. One was stunning. <laughs> I was like, I want to buy you. I feel like I done had a coat that looked like that before. <laughs>